to be able to, to use the, the media to the fullest, to convey the message or to spin the truth. So he has an extensive control in the public television channels in Thailand. And I, I said personally, I have never been invited to channel 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, and Thai TBS for, uh, at all, either in the government or in the opposition, because most of them are being controlled, or the board of each of these television channels are being controlled by, by taxing money or paper and so on. It's not a complaint, you know, but it's a fact of life. That, uh, that is a denial of, uh, of, of access to information. And if you are in the opposition, then uh, you never get a chance to, to be on those television. And that is a reflection also of quite a, 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 this, a police state and media control. That, that's one point. Second, at the same time, Kun Thaksin employed a lot of consultant firms in London and in the United States to influence European Parliament to influence the media here, some politicians, and particularly people in New York and in Washington. So it's an extensive campaign to spin the truth and so on. But I think the dominance used to be 100% until six, seven months back. But I think the social media is something that Kun Thaksin could not control inside Thailand or outside, or cross-border. Second, I think we were able to have access to cable channel. So I think the, yesterday I had a two hours of meeting with people from the Financial Times. And before coming here, I think the last month I met Jonathan Head of BBC two or three times already in Bangkok. I do write to political parties. I write to the community of democracies in, in Warsaw, Poland. I write to members of the Congress and so on. So I think that media battle is an ongoing process, but we came a bit late and we haven't got the resources. I only have my hand and my head to, to write and send it. But we are doing this extensively. And coming here tomorrow, I will be in the Netherlands and in France and in Germany and in Belgium to see Thai community, yes, but also to meet political parties. I also have a courtesy call on the president of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. I want to talk about extrajudicial killings. This would be my second visit to The Hague. But this is another example that we are trying very hard with our limited means. That's one point. Second is that I think the support internationally of Kun Thaksin, I think he speaks, he's deemed to perceive to be speaking the same language of corporatism as the big American oil companies and energy companies and so on. He is that man. And when we were in the government, we refused to do the privatization with the state enterprises. So it doesn't go with the neoliberal schools of Washington. So that a bit of ideological conflict. Although we are a Democrat, liberal party, but when it comes to the utility state enterprises, I think we are not looking for profit. And partial privatization of Thai International Airlines and the petroleum authorities of Thailand, 49% of the petroleum PTT authorities of Thailand end up in a few families. And I'm not surprised that those families has the name of the Chinawatra. So we cannot turn a state enterprise that belong to the people and ended up in the political families' hands. So that's one point. And that, that's why we urge the corporate interests around Washington and New York that they have not been able to open up the whole of Thailand for corporate control. 
and they believe Thaksin is that man speak the same language. So he travels around the world looking for oil and gas exploitation. I don't know on behalf of whom, but I'm not surprised if it's on behalf of the corporate bodies in Europe and in North America in, in particular. So it's not only the media that has been spinning on the payrolls together with the lobbyist companies and consultant companies of the Western world on behalf of Thaksin, but the corporate also. And we are fighting. The people said no more. Thailand is not going to be exploited. And the resources must belong to the people. And that leads me to your second question, what are the reform elements? As I mentioned that since uh, King Tulalongkorn Rama V, Thailand is a very centralized country. Although 20 years ago we had the village, elected council, town councils and so on. But the governors in all the provinces, except Bangkok, are bureaucrats. So one of the first reform is to or it's on decentralization to delegate more power to the to the local governments with budget. Second would be on the control of the resources, oil and gas and natural resources in the provinces and in the region and so on. There would be more equitable and fair distribution. Third, there should not be the arms of ministries in the provinces. I don't think there is a need for Office of the Ministry of Culture to be in Phuket province because the cultural activities could be delegated to, to Phuket province. This is an example. So we have to cut down the presence of the centralized ministries in the provinces and empower the people and the localities to do more of the work either the local government, the NGOs, or the professional groups, and so on. So the restructuring of the administrative regime of Thailand on decentralization and empowerment would be one of the key areas. Second, to reform the judicial branch, particularly the police department, which is like a military entity. I did speak at a rally few days back, that if I were to be in power, the first thing that I would do is to kick out the uh, police cadets from the military academy, academy. Because I'm not going to train the police to become a military man. I want to train policemen to become friends of the, of the people. And I think the local police should come under the authority of the local government and not at the centralized police chief in Bangkok. So on the judicial side of it, the legal process and so on. And corruption cases, I think the main proposal is that to have no terms limit. If you cheat the country, then your chances of facing the, the, the court would, would, would go on until you die. So there is no statute of uh, limitation in, in that sense. Then I think that would be health reform, education reform, and I think to improve on the infrastructure connectivity, the whole linkage. Thailand, after a hundred years, irrigation for the farming sector is less than 20% of cultivated land areas and so on, which compared to Korea, which is 80%. So a lot of things would have to be done, and more is to the allocation of the resources to the localities. And things that affect the people would no longer be at the purview and authority of the majority votes in the parliament, because that had become majority absolutist, but it would have to go through more and more of the people's referendum. 
so more participatory uh, politics in, in that sense. And uh, there have been an ongoing reform work by Chulalongkorn University. They have a full team by NIDA, the National what you call, Administrative and Graduate School. Kamasad is doing this. I think that is the Prapok Rao Institute, which belongs to the parliament, has done extensive work on the reform. So I think, and there is a, a set of reports by former Prime Minister of Thailand, Kun Anand Panjarachun, and a number one NGO leader, uh, Dr. Praveen Vasi. So the stack of paper is already there on the structural reform of Thailand and the people's participation in the control of wealth and natural resources and so on. So it's only just simply to collate them and summarize them and present it to the people for the referendum. And we believe that it could be done within six months' time with a new interim government that uh, would be agreed upon by all the political parties and Kun Sutep on the street and so on. But there is some sort of a internal consultation going on every day to find a sort of a, an acceptable formula. But at the moment, Kun Taksit is more interested in protection of his wealth and to get back the confiscated money. So I think we are talking on two different levels. His personal wealth and we are talking about national reconciliation and reform. So when I left Bangkok two days ago, that is still up in the air. So we need someone from outside to tell Kun Thaksin that he should stop meddling in Thailand's politics and learn how to ride the camels <laughs> and play with the sand dunes. We've got a lot of hands. Um, perhaps start with you, uh, and then we'll move around. But please, could you be fairly brief? Yes. Uh, what is the thing about uh, now the international media called the protester in Thailand is uh, like uh, the anti-democracy protester, represent the anti-government protester. And some of the newspaper uh, uh, said uh, your party, the democracy party, uh, now is an anti-democracy system and try to uh, co cooperate with the army to destroy the democracy system in Thailand. Do you believe it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just read for No, no, do you believe it? <laughs> what did you touch thing? Uh, I, I am a law student. <laughs> if I, uh, in my opinion, in the room of law, I uh, a little believe it. It it is not uh, okay, the okay, international fine. principle. No, no, no problem. No okay. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did not listen carefully in my concluding remarks <coughs> that after eight years of representative politics, money and corruption has taken hold of Thai political process. And it started, I think, mostly at the yellow shirts against taxing, corruption, and abuse of power. But now it has culminated in a call to end all style money politics and start anew with the reform process, with more participation by the people in the decision-making process of the Thai society at the central level and in the localities. So I think the people on the street would like to end the abuse system and start anew. And with her calling for that end of a system and to start anew, as an expression on the street, is it undemocratic? And the Western media 
has failed to link this to the situation in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Turkey, in Ukraine, and in Russia, and many aspiring democracies and emerging democracies. Why did Senate, uh, Foreign Secretary, uh, State Secretary Curry has the audacity to meet with the Ukrainian opposition leaders in Berlin for the fact that they have come out to protest on the FTA agreement with EU. It's not a matter of life and death. But it answered the interest of the United States to undermine the bloody Russian for them to end the dominance of Ukraine and bring Ukraine under the auspicious of the EU and the Western world. So it's a direct interference. I don't say that the president of Ukraine is a nice person, but I think the United States and the European Union have been undermining the democratization process of Ukraine. And, but at the same time, when the Thai people come out to ask for a change of regime that has been abusive, then we were, or the people of Thailand were being labeled as undemocratic. But we want to make it more democratic. That's why we wanted the reform. Because the system had, that has been ruling Thailand for the past 40, 50 years has not worked. Otherwise, we keep on having protests and military coup d'etat. Second, on the democrat side, we told Kun Ying Lak and Kun Thak Sin that the election on the 2nd of February day would not solve the problem but would make more conflicts. It's like the horses and the cart. To put the election first is like putting the cart before the horse. We say let's look, let's examine the ills of the political and life of Thailand, and let's examine the behavior of the Ying Lak government first, and let's agree that work on the reform and postpone the election. So we are only asking for the postponement, and we are willing to work with everyone, including the red shirts, to do the reform process of Thailand to ensure that the democratic institution and life would be workable from now on. And then we were rejected. And it has proven that the people did not participate in a vote. The last elections, the Per Thai won 15 million. This time they got about seven. So there's a reflection that the insistence on the election doesn't solve the problem. And the voice of the people have said that we do not like you and we would like to change the system. And now we are at an impasse looking for the way out. And we have said this to everyone that we are willing to sit down and work on the reform and have the elections within six months time. But we cannot go on into the elections and then we end up in the same parliamentary system where majority rectarianism rules the day. I was on the list to speak in parliament so many times, number six, number seven. By the time it comes to number five, the majority majorityism in the parliament closed the debate and did the worst. And that is not democracy because we, the voice of the minority, never had a chance to tell the people through the parliament what we thought. We had been cut off so many times for the past two and a half years. It was a kangaroo court inside the Thai parliament because majority reason was the rules of the day. Since I have the majority, then I could become totalitarian or authoritarian. Then uh, the democracy doesn't work. And then we told the government, if you could do this, then you get street politics. And then they got street politics. Ying Lak never came to the parliament. Even voting, they have been cheating. They ask someone to keep on what you call, vote for them and so on. And then it's been, it's been caught by, by photograph and so on. But, but this is the, the whole point that, that we 
only ask for the postponement. And I think the right not to participate in the politics is a democratic right. It's not an act of being anti-democracy. We are against amnesty law, although the amnesty law would cover myself because I have four or five court cases, one as a terrorist. <laughs> and I'm willing to go through the court cases. Each time that I travel outside Bangkok, I have to put 600 million baht as a bond to the court. I'm a frequent visitor to the, to the criminal court. For, for what type of charges and so on. So this is where the legal reform would have to come into the picture. I gave five minutes speech at the airport, so one of whom, and I have been charged about five pages as an enemy of the nation and terrorist. Everything, the police keep on writing with that extensive imagination to charge me. Uh, so there's something wrong in the Thai legal process that we, we got to change it. Then they were asked me, what the hell did I do at the airport? You know, but the charges were so expensive. I could not believe that this has to do with myself. That's an example. Jen Kapp? Um, yes. Sorry for the long answer. No, I will okay. try to be short. You, and then you, and then up the back. One, two, three, okay, and then we'll take another round. Okay. So if you could each quickly ask your question, and then perhaps you could ask answer the three. Yeah. Okay. Same with you. Uh, uh, to the remarks about the uh, international media. So, uh, I've been here five years and uh, the same, I read the same things at, as uh, other people in the world. And um, the only uh, means that I can, can know things about Thailand right now is to, through the uh, international media. But the thing is, uh, right now, and maybe in the past, we don't uh, necessarily know uh, who is the real players in the um, uh, political arenas. Uh, in Thailand, so we we cannot uh, assess uh, the political situation uh, in the full light as uh, you know politicians like you that have uh, more insights than than like ordinary uh, Thais. How would how would we ensure uh, how the uh, PDRC ensure that uh, international media and uh, ordinary citizens like me uh, have this, uh, the facts that necessarily. Uh, uh, important to make decision to uh, choose polit politicians like yourself or Ying Lak or Taksin. Can I answer? Um, well, you, well, I think one by one is easier. Yeah. <coughs> we, you think one by one? Yeah, I think okay. it's easier. I wrote many articles. Only Al Jazeera published my articles. And I'm sure that the BBC, the Financial Times, and so on would not, would not accept my article. And quite a few of my colleagues in the Democrat Party wrote to the Wall Street and could, so could on. You, could you say explicitly why those media wouldn't uh, you have publish? You them. And I mentioned already that they, some of them, they, they have this romantic idea about Thaksin being a man of the people. So, so care so, for the poor. That's so one that's, point. Second, we don't, they don't like us because some of them are socialists, left. So they don't like the Democrat Party because we are deemed to be conservative. But you said so that you, I you are... I, I'm making the judgment why they don't. And third, they are on the payroll of Thaksin. So being socialist, being romantic, and being on the payroll, a combination of the three. But uh, you said that you are a liberal Democrat for, for Thailand. They perceive me otherwise. How what? come I am in the, a member of the Liberal Dem uh, International here based in London? Do you, do you, think, do you think BBC uh, uh, received the money directly from Thaksin? I don't, from know. Thaksin or, or I don't know, but why the hell they keep on saying half of the truth all the time. For example, on the violence in Bangkok, it's only at one place, but the way the BBC and, uh, and CNN were going about, as if that the whole Bangkok is, is on fire. And for the 20 incidents that occurred the past few weeks, it's only against the PDRC. And none, even being when you caught on the CCTV, the police has not been able 
So it's being done, supported, instigated, and carried out by the government side, by the police side. That is the truth. So that's, that's why I asked, because uh, the PDRC itself has many uh, elements to it. Uh, there's a PDRC or Corporator or Corporator. There's uh, so many players in, in play, and we don't even know who the real leaders are. So, uh, I, 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 I don't agree with you. Go Kun Suthev is, is the leader. He speaks every day. No, I mean, the uh, international media doesn't have access to... to I don't the, think so. I think the members of the Foreign Democratic, uh, the Foreign Correspondent Club, is with Kun Suthev almost 24 hours. Then, then why don't they... Uh, you have you to know. ask them. <laughs> you don't ask me. I, I'm accusing them. Okay. And you have to help me to prove the truth. You know, that, that, that's one, please, and, and, and then, I am not here to represent the PDRC. Well, thank you very much for your insightful talk. Um, my question concerns um, sort of the future strategy of the opposition to mobilize voters, because you were mentioning that um, also your so vision for the times in the future would still involve some element of uh, representative democracy with elections and all that. So, and it seems to me like that the opposition has the crucial problem that they are also like alienated from a big number of the voters. Whether you could sort of say something about the strategy let to, me, to let, overcome let me this alienation. Let me make a distinction because I think you are your word opposition is too universal in its coverage. You've got to make a distinction between the PDRC on the street and we as the Democrat Party. I think what we are the same is on the end to the toxin dominance of Thai politics. And second, we do agree on the elements of the reform and the reforms process of having a new interim government. But we disagree with them, with the PDRC, on the setting up of an interim government. We said many times that if it is extra constitutional, we will not agree. We are opposed uh, to it. Okay, that, that is a very clear message that we have said times. And, and, and again, second, we are willing to sit out during the reform process. If we are to be excluded from the reform process, it's fine. But if we are invited, it's fine. And Kun Sutev has said that he doesn't want any politician and political parties to, to participate in the reform process. Third, we have not yet a position on a mixture of Thai parliament of geography-based representation. Like here from the UK, you are from a county or constituent. And a professional base or functional base. I think the thinking among the PDRC is for a mix of professional, geography-based politicians and representation of professional and interest groups and the minorities. You have your house of law, good or not good, but, but it's a functioning one and non-elected, non-elected. But this one will be elected. But we haven't seen eye to eye on, on this one whether whether we could agree on, on professional representation and whether that is, from our point of view, as a liberal entity, is it democratic? It's still a debate inside the political party, party but my point to you is that at certain point you have to make a distinction between our position as a political party and, our, and the course of action taken by the PDRC. But I, what I want to emphasize is that the people no longer accept the political and parliamentary system as is. 
And if anyone do not understand that, then I think there is no point of, of conversation. Because it is like a revolution in the, in the making. Not with the tanks, military coup d'etat, but with the people on the street. That we want to change the society, you can call it whatever. Tom Yam Kung revolution, because you call the Ukraine one, the orange one, and so on. Look at it from that point of view, then maybe you could, we could understand and appreciate more what the Thai people at this point in time would like to happen. I think that there is now talks about directly elected prime minister and to make uh, the executive branch really separated, that is the cabinet, from the parliament. So members of parliament like the British system cannot, in Thailand, thinking now, should not strike that you are an MP and you can also be a cabinet minister. And I think the thinking now in Thailand is to have a completely separated executive side without any linkage to the to the parliament. Yes, you can't buy yourself. Right, uh, that's the first point. And second one is that uh, not every politician running for elections has to belong to a political party. We, we would like to allow more independent bodies uh, to, to, to come in. But this is an ongoing discussion. And whether to have the Senate or to have a one house, half professional, half geography, and uh, I think whether we should continue with the Senate, this is still that, you know, a, a, a debate. But we are looking at all the setups of various countries. And so far, the Thai constitution, the political setup, has been influenced by the German thinking with the party list. So maybe we have to do away with the party list, because that is the way to open up money politics to come in. You are on the party list because you give the party 5 million baht or 10 million baht. So it's, it's a very abusive Thai type of thing. But I was in Israel a few weeks back. They don't have constituents. They only have party lists. So it's another another extreme. But how to ensure that you put good people on the party list if you were to have a party list? And it, at the moment, it's only 125 out of 500. So either to have it all or half half to 250 seats each, it, it's an ongoing debate. What what is going to be the best formula? Yes. Um, what about you? Are, and then we'll have two more. So, could you debate your question? Yes, I believe that there are, there are quite a few law students in there. Could you please tell us what happened to the Thai law and the justice in Thailand right now? Thank you. Kun Thaksin says that since I have the majority votes, I represent the majority of the people, so I should appoint the Supreme Court judge. And I should control the Speaker of the Parliament. And the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Court, the Administrative Court are not elected. So how can they, they judge me? So this blurring of the separation of power between the executive, legislative, and the judicial branch has been happening in Thailand with the use of the majority rule and the majority rule <coughs> argument as a setting point that once I have the majority, then I control the three branches of government. Then it becomes a totalitarian state. And I have been surprised 
that Thailand has so many lawyers and judges and legal academicians. Maybe less than five have come out to accuse Kun Thaksin of his thinking and way of doing things, of massing the powers of the three branches under the majority authoritarianism. And I think this is what we have to do, the reform process. And I think we have to change the way we bring cases to the court. You, you, you are charged, but I think in a lot of developed countries you cannot be charged. You have to be investigated first in order to be charged. And in that sense, it gives so much power to the police to charge you on anything. And then you have to go and tell the court later that you are innocent, but the process is very late, very long. So the whole judicial system of Thailand has to be reformed drastically and to maybe to introduce the jury system and to maybe to introduce the uh, sort of the community court to settle, you know, marriage problems, husband beating the wife and so on. They should not go to the court but let the community decide on their behalf. Yes, yes. Uh, gentleman the great you touched on um the corruption side of things. Um, how would you propose a, a way of um, solving the endemic and systemic corruption that you know, many generations of Thais have um, grown up with corruption being the normal practice? I, I had a meeting with the former Minister of Justice of Sweden in Bangkok about two, a month and a half ago. And now he is the Secretary General of the Olof Palm International Center. And I asked him that when he was Minister of Justice, does he have the power to approve a procurement project of the, the Ministry of Justice? And he told me that none of the Swedish ministers have the authority to approve a project. And I told him that when I was foreign minister, the thing that I hated most is to put my signature on computer purchase, repair of the ambassador residence buying furniture for the embassy because when it comes to, I don't know, say five million baht, then it's no longer the authority, the, the power of the bureaucrats. It has to come to the minister. So the first end to the corruption is to not allow any minister or prime minister to, to sign their names. And I know that in the present government, every minister that once they get into position on the first day, they ask the permanent secretary and the financial officers how much budget is left of all. And then budget of all the departments are being accumulated at the office of the minister. That's the first point, okay? So no power to the minister. Second, public procurement has to be transparent. And there should be an independent procurement body like budget committee, audit committee, and procurement to look after all the public procurements of all ministries instead of allowing this to the discretionary power or the special contract of each of the ministries that lead to corruption. And we want to work with the OECD, I think, because they, they have a lot of experiences and so on. That, that's one that we can work with the OECD. I know the Dutch government has a sort of similar setup, or the Danish and so on. So we are learning a lot from the European on how to really put a system into the public procurement so as not to allow uh, corruption.
that, that I think the procurement side is the most important thing. When I was minister, I, we had some cooperation with the, with the United Nations on, on the public procurement. Second one is on the ethical education. One of the five principal precepts of Buddhism is not to steal, but every Thai politician corrupted one steal every day. So I think we have to go back to the to the basic moral uh, teaching, and everything has to be done by by example at home, at workplace, in schools, and so on. Because in Thai school, you have to buy seeds to get into the good school. So corruption from the beginning with your child. So how can you talk about governance and so on when you, you already destroy your children about a seat in, in a school? So we are a sick society in that sense. And that has to to be changed. And I am happy that the people have come out because they are talking about governance. They want a moral government and not an exploitive one. I am the only former ambassadors and minister that live in a small townhouse. When I said this to people, no one believed me. They thought that I must have like a chateau and five cars and so on. It depends on your value, judgment, and what do you want to to do in life and, and what, 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 what type of life you want. And we have been too much of the consumer society and wealth-oriented. Uh, so un-Buddhist and un thai in terms of moderation. And we're very surprised. So everyone is looking to achieve something, to gain something, to enrich himself in a very endless manner. I was advisor to Kun Thaksin. I advised him two points. One, to set up the trust fund for his businesses. Second, to set up a foundation to do philanthropic work. And I said, I volunteer to be your director for the foundation. Never touch his ear. So, that's, that's so we parted company. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned about like the reform and then you expand on how you do it. But you know, like there were attempts on then reforming even in, in the Democrats party govern governments where Kunapi said set up some sort of reform committee but then it was unsuccessful. I mean, it's it's easy to say, but it's really difficult to do so because, like, since we since we since we abolished the the monarchy system, there there was never a stability in our, in our political system in, in, in the past 80 years, even pre Thaksin's era. I do agree with everything you said about the um, the rise pledging the rise pledging scheme, which I do write articles about, and the the tablet per child. That's that's a very disastrous uh, populist policies. But then um, you said you disagree with with the PPRC standpoint in in, in, in the unelected people's committee. You said the, the Democratic Party disagrees with that. But then how how would you then suggest the the, the reformation process? Uh, I, I think we did mention about. Having it go through, having it go through the Senate, and then the Senate can submit the list of the interim government, uh, cabinet to His Majesty the King under Article 37 and I think 84. But that would be undemocratic, isn't it? No, I, I think you look at the change of the Italian government yesterday. Do you think that uh, Lenzi replacing uh, let's say? Is that undemocratic or, or between, uh, in Australia, two times between the man and the lady? But then, but then looking at the No, no, no. I, and the point is that, is that undemocratic? It, it, it depends on, on the context. On that's that's right. And, and the point is that, uh, that is, then 
maybe that's an interim measure for Italy and for Australia and also for Thai because after that in six months or a year's time there will be the general elections to make it more democratic. So, so the point is that you need an interim government to help the reform process. And then we do it legally under Article 3.7 and so on. So on one point you said it's not democratic but it's legal. And you get the consensus, as I mentioned, of all political parties. But then you have to take into account the that would ignite the the the, 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 the flame of your red shirts. No, I don't think so because yeah. I said that Ying Lap would be invited to to Join discuss. Yeah, so far, it has been there has been an ongoing yeah. talk that we had to sit down together and agree on the acceptable interim government. The Italian did it for a year, two years. And now look at it. I mean, they have the technocrat government. I mean, and they're not elected. And why the hell is Italy? Is it still in the European Union? They should be kicked out because the government was not elected. And one more question. If, if you don't but you have to help me to answer my question also. <laughs> All right. well, what's the question? You know, <laughs> the Italian government was a technocrat, not elected. How can they remain a member of the European Union because it's not a democratic country? So sometimes you got to give way to some sort of flexibility because this is a special emergency situation, special circumstances where certain rules could be applicable, certain rules should be postponed for the time being. And in order to solve Thailand, we need an interim technocrat government that would be acceptable to all the political parties and major players for six months. But the to do the, I think the red shirt is no more. The reality is that they have been trying to rally for six, seven times. They never get more than 10,000. It's the myth of the red shirts. That's why Ying Lap and Taksin has to recourse to the police department. Because they could not use the red shirts anymore. The red shirts are the joke of Thailand at the moment, please. I see them. I know them. The only thing that they can do is two, 10 days ago, Apisit and myself, we went up to Sukhonakorn and the aircraft landed at Nong Thai. The wretches were waiting for us. We have to leave the airport by the tarmac. What, what is that wretched democracy? Everywhere I go, Okun Apisit go, if they could beat me up to death, they would do it. So what is this romanticism with the wretches being so democratic. I see them as the brown shirts and the black shirts a la Germany and Italy. I know every one of them. I know their ring leaders. They're fascist. Yes, the back. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, what do you think is the main reason that the Democrat Party hasn't won the election for like several years? When we were defeated, we never complain about the defeat on how we were cheated. We accepted the result. So no, 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 no. When we came into the government, the wretches burned Bangkok. So that's, you have to, to be aware of that. In the course of the year 2009, 10, and 11, but how you came into power was not by uh, the general election. Then you answer, then how did the Italian change the government or the Australian? Because it was a special circumstance. And it is legal because it was voted inside the parliament. There were candidates. Kun Apisit lost three, two, three times. Two times. Sukun Samak and Kun Somchai. The third time he, he won against uh, the police, uh, Prachar. So you said that those three things, when, when they won, you said it's, uh, it's, uh, it's democratic. And then when they lost it, when then we won, then it's not democratic. Yeah. Then what is your logic? We did not win an election. No, but it, but it was, that is the Thai way of electing the prime minister. We are not electing the prime minister directly. It has to be voted in the parliament. That is by the rules of the game. No, no, listen. Because you were not elected, okay. No, my, but Apisit was elected. Apisit was elected as an MP. 
But to become prime minister, he has to contest in the in the parliament. He lost two times and won one time. But it's it's a fact that you did not win the election. So. But does the that? rules allow it to be done? Wait. So you're saying that um, the forces of the general people do not matter? Is that but correct? later, the, then later we call the we call the elections, and then we lost. I mean, Mr. But there are rules. That the, the Prime Minister would have to be elected in the Parliament. Okay, listen. I, I'm not listening, you have to listen to me. <laughs> Sorry, you have to do a... Were the rules, the Constitution of 206, 207, military inspired? Yeah, it was by the... The Constitution Court... Uh, and and who, who, who won the elections under that constitution? Second, the constitution was approved at a referendum. Because people were scared? No. Yeah, people said, okay, we wanted that constitution. I don't know, the people are scared or what? No, no. I Is don't. it democratic that the election commission appoints the next military leaders in September? Why cheat the country and induce protests on the street and eventually the military? Why, why did Thaksin cheat? Why did he change the law? Why did he sell the concession and so on? You have to look at the causes also, not only the consequences of the military coup d'etat. I don't agree to the military coup d'etat. But the social ills of the political process... You it's the constitution that's put in bureaucratic implants that are operational now and fix everything. No, I don't think so. I think that why people protest because government cheat, or because government abuses power in Tunisia and Egypt and so on. So that's that. one point, that's one point. Okay, the Egyptian formula was to have General Sisi do the coup d'etat. And we did this in the year 2006, and now the people don't want any more military coup d'etat. Sure. Okay, so I think things are improving in Thailand. Oh, I agree. Okay? Then, but I cannot go back and change history. But the point is that with the majority rule of Thaksin, and then he abused the power and cheated can't say the country. That he didn't win one election, by the way. He so you keep power. on winning election, and then you keep well, on cheating the country. In communism, you have election. What? In communism, you have election. Right? <laughs> 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 um, so do you really think that the the PRC has a right to form that, um, that's the power of a child. I, 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 you never listen to me. I said that whatever they do, it has to be under the Constitution. <coughs> and if there, we were to have the general agreement and recourse to Article 3, 7, and 84, and then go through the route of the Senate, for this special situation, circumstances, we have an interim government in order to solve the problem and set up the democratic table. That is one way of trying to solve the problem. Whether it is fully democratic or not is debatable. But the point is, do you want to solve the problem for Thailand? Then we find the most acceptable formula, maybe it is not 100% democratic or 100% to the wish of the people and so on. But it's the politics of compromise. The Egyptian, they did it by the military route. The Tunisian, they did it by the resignation of the president. The Syrians do not compromise, so they keep on killing each other. 100,000 people already died. And 2 million internal displacement and 2 million refugees in in Lebanon and in Jordan and in Turkey. I've been to Lebanon a few weeks, a few months ago. I was in Jordan a few months ago. So which type of, of example that you would like to suggest to Thailand? The Egyptian one, the Tunisian one, the Syrian one, or the Turkish one, or the Ukrainian one? And all of this Formulas are all wrong according to your find, and we keep on killing each other. So, anybody who hasn't yet asked a question, uh, you, and then up the back, here, please, quickly. Right. Um, you claim that the, the ranchers um, are the 
and the opposition, no, sorry, like the elections are not, not important anymore, and they are basically romanticizing like elections and democracy whatsoever. But isn't it, isn't it you yourself romanticizing the, what's going on in Thailand right now? Like, liberation and things like that. Like, I never said the righteous are romanticizing themselves. I, I'm answering the question that why some of the Western media are not happy with the PDRC or with the Democrat Party. Because they, they seem to be romanticizing about the true democratic nature of the Red Church, right or wrong, it's up to you. That's yeah, uh, the first point, but I'm not saying the Red Church are romanticizing. That's the anyway, first point. Even, even if that's the case, but you say like, uh, now the people in Thailand are like uprising, things like that. No, no, the, the second point, to answer I think his question, I said that the Red Church could not gather themselves as a viable force anymore. They tried it many times. I and then they were not successful, so I think that is that. My it's main question is not about the red shirt. It's yeah. about you romanticizing the, the liberation or whatsoever you call it. Well, right what now. do I romanticize? Like, you said like, now like people... Uh, no, I'm analyzing, I'm not romanticizing, I'm so sorry. I am not a romantic. I <laughs> do like women, but I'm not a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I am making an analysis of the Thai political development I from know, my point of view. I would say, like, even if that, that, that was the case, but, like, even if the, the, the opposition leader, like the Kun Sutev, is himself far from clean person, like a corrupt person, how can you say, like, he's going to lead this, like, change in Thailand? I couldn't see the, that, that kind of thing happen. I think uh, for his things, if they were to be true, it's according to his karma, I suppose this. I am not here to judge and I do not know the truth, whether the allegation that he takes money from people. Then in that sense, uh, I think Thaksin is much more overt in that sense. Okay, that's the first point. Second. People believe in Kun Suthep at the moment because he resigned from the Democrat Party. Second, he said that I will not go back to politics. But I'm here with the people in order to bring down the Thaksin regime and start Thailand anew. And the people believed him. And if you don't believe him, it's too bad. I'm so sorry for you. But I would like you if you could come to Thailand and then walk with me on the streets and go to the rallies with me, observe behind the scene, behind the stage, talk to the people. Then you would appreciate more what the hell is going on in Thailand, how genuine the wishes of the people for a drastic change of the Thai society and end with this money politics and abuses of power. And that is not romanticism. The wolf that is not romanticism. The wolf are always in the sheep court. I don't know. That's for you to judge. And if you don't believe Kun Sutev, it's fine with me. But I think millions and millions of people are with him today. And they have no vested interest. Most of them are housewives. Poor people. How can you know that? I don't know, but I'm with them every day. I'm so sorry, dear. I talk to them on the street. They're not all, they're not all rich men. Not rich people. people. They're house, simple housewives, simple people from farms. There's one more question from a lady who hasn't spoken yet. Yeah. Should be a lady first from the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you've spoken very eloquently about the wishes of the people, talking about uh, your supporters and protesters. Um, and you've talked about how uh, you apparently oppose majority rule and you would like to have uh, more referendums as a way to uh, run policy in the country. But in a way, hasn't the most recent election been a kind of referendum in which the turnout was lower than in the previous election, but actually millions still turned out to support Yin Luck. And in fact, the protesters still represent a small minority group uh, who, who it's, it's hard to say how, uh, that they, it's hard to say how many people they actually represent, when in fact we have this evidence from an election uh, that they 
are probably in a minority position. So I, I'm wondering, you know, how how do you how do you ascribe the this, uh, this title of the people, Muwa uh, uh, to this relatively small group of protesters? Uh, on the first one, I I do not. dislike majority rule. I am saying that the majority rule has been abused to the extent that it becomes the authoritarian majority rule and no relationship between the majority and the minority inside the parliament. But the majority so, rule, would, would that be restored once you have the interim government? And well, I think government? every government, to become government, has to have the majority, but how do you use the majority rule? And I have explained to you that Kun Thaksin has been using the majority rule in a very authoritarian, absolutist manner and interfering in the separation of the three basic branches of government of powers, using the majority rule to interfere, to control the judicial branch and the, the legislative branch. And my question to you, could that happen at the Westminster, the UK Parliament? That, that Cameron suddenly said that I have the majority, therefore I control the three branches of the government. This, this is the difference between the, I think the, the checks and balances between the two. So, he, so Kun Thak Sin with the majority rule has abused the check and balance principle. But, but it's not illegal. What no, it is illegal. Because according to the Constitution, it stipulates that there must be a separation of power and non-interference. And Kun Thaksin has been using the argument of the, spinning the argument of the majority rule to have the complete control of the three branches. So in that sense, then there is no democracy. So there is only the semblance of the democracy of the majority rule. That's the first answer to your first question. And on the re voting result, I think the no vote and non-participation is bigger than those who went to the poll to vote. And those that went to the poll to vote, a lot of them were being coerced by the local village what man and the provincial governor. Huh? But there's no evidence for this. You have to come to Thailand, you know. <laughs> you know, I am not here, I am not the, the Sherlock Holmes for you. But I'm making the political analysis and the political reality for you. You believe or not you believe, I think that's but... But if it's your element, my, my, my point, you no, no, I, I, you have, That's why I said that you have to talk to the ordinary Thai people that on the election days, their identity card ID were being taken over by the village headman to ensure that they go to the voting booth, uh, booth and get 500 baht and then they will be returned with their ID. Second, the government side or the Pleur Thai Party bought sets of uh, election commissions in various provinces. Third, the police chief in each of the provinces were being told that you have to tell the people that you have to vote Pleur Thai. And these are things that happen every day. And you've got to come with me and, and we go around and talk to the Human Rights Commission, to the election watch and so on. They, they have. Yeah, but that's why this is that's why all of these stories are coming out and evidences are coming out. I haven't got with me here at the moment. Because there is none. No, I know. I, I don't tell lies. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not telling lies. I am so so sorry. That uh, that's why we have to reform Thai political system because this is one of the way of cheating at the election. And if you don't believe me, I'm so sorry. I, I don't ask you to to believe me, but. That's why we have to change the system. And it's not only me, so five millions and millions of people have come out. And you don't say that people with Kun Sitev, the PDRC, is a minority. How can you have millions of people to come on the street? And the channel, blue television channel cable, is the most watched television program at this point in time because they televised the, the on, going on, so on, on, the, on the street. And what you have read from the economists about the minority and so on is no longer true. The, the, the scenario of Thai political scene has changed. And no more these red shirts being democratic and taxing the love of the ordinary people. No.
people are re getting to the re reality of life. They have awakened from their deep dream of sleep, of taxing as the man of the people. I just want to, I, I, I have a problem. My aunt, I'm, I come from a poor family. My aunt is a, a farmer. She said if she didn't come to work, she wouldn't get her money from the government. That's the proof. Mm -hmm. And I don't lie. I have nothing to do with him or with the, whatever. I just hate the corruption. Thank you. Any other points? Or? Yes. Um, yes, then you. Sorry, have you already spoken? You've not, so you can. <laughs> I think there's a lot of hostile attitude towards um, pro taxing and anti taxing. But um, I want to ask you about unification. What are your views on how to unify Thailand as a singular uh, society? I think that you have the Tea Party in the United States. And you used to have McCarthy, anti-communist in the United States. So you have extreme elements. And in Europe, you have the skinheads. You have people that don't die Muslims. You have anti-immigration. Even Switzerland just decided not fellow Europeans don't come to Switzerland. So there will be differences in in every society and their prejudices. But the point is that the people today no longer accept status quo always of politics. And it's not a question of compromise. You don't compromise with Satan, with the evil. I think the people have to win in order to change and move forward Thailand. Thailand should no longer be bogged down with money politics and corruption and abuse of power. I am not going to reconcile with Kun Taksin. I was one of his closest colleagues for the record. And we parted company, I told him so. That we have differences. And I have declared my opposition to him. I don't speak about Kun Taksin from the theoretical point of view. I worked with him since Pak Palang Tham before the Thai Rak Thai. I knew him, we worked with him. I share ideas and idealism. But at the end of the day, I said, no, you, you are not real. I know reconciliation. With, with respect, um, because there are still many people who are pro taxing Fine. Uh, yeah, but how can you deal with that? How can you resolve the hostile? I think the Red Church has change site had appeared on, on PDRC rallies and so on because they had come to the realization that the populist policy promises none was being realized because money was being lost in corruption and there is not enough budget to cater to the populist policy because we have a limited amount of budget but the projects under the populist policies is twice or three times the budget and so on. And you cannot allow that to happen. You cannot allow the Labour Party or the Liberal Democrats or the Conservative or the Independents here in the United Kingdom to come and promise the moon and the star to the people with a populist policy. Look at Venezuela, man of the people, 52% inflation one of the biggest oil producing countries in the world, now poor as hell. So elected also with a majority, very popular indeed. But it doesn't give Chavez and the like of him the blank check to exploit and to abuse every fabric of his society. And this is what we are telling Taksin, that no more of you. And we have to fight to the death if that needs to be, because you cannot allow this type of political regime to ever occur again in the Thai Kingdom. And I say this in full awareness of the my faculties of, of myself. 
but a bit of emotion, yes, because I see this as a fight between good and evil to a certain extent, that we cannot allow abusive politics to abuse Thailand anymore. And I parted company from Thaksin. If I did not know him, I did not work with him, it would be another matter, and I'm thinking from a romantic and theoretical point of view, but I, we have been involved as colleagues. And if you don't believe what I say, fine with me. I tell you a story interesting to hear. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to add to your point that uh, in our society, it's being deeply divided because part of it is because of the information. Now we're looking at the same picture, but you can look in, you can see a different picture because of the information that is being twisted by the government. You know, they've got a microphone. When we say, on the stage, who got a microphone? People hear them. So I think after we are um, reformed, and then we can get more control of the media. So the right information, the truth in the information, reach to the both, both sides of people, and I think that can be, our country can be reunited. when he would direct in the military to take? I was in the cabinet. You went to the cabinet? I was in the cabinet, and then there were many discussions in the cabinet. And the use of force was withheld to the last day because they took over La Chapasong Square and uh, Lumpini Park for months. 92 killed. Yeah, uh, no, 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 but, but one at a time. And uh, we have, and then they were fully armed. There were incendiaries, there were uh, hand bombs, and uh, machine guns, and so on. And then uh, during that month period, we tried to, we were successful in taking the children and, uh, and the women out, and was able to disperse and send people home uh, at Rajapasong. But at the Lumpini Park, it was a military camp. Of the, men, of, the, of, the of, the of the men in black. Mm -hmm. And then they started to shoot people. Okay, that, that's the first point. Second, when you say 91 deaths, it's not on that day of the operation. 91 deaths. Yeah. There were many deaths occurring at a different location, at a different time, and different causes and circumstances. But to put that 91 on the day of the 17th to the 19th of May would be historically wrong. But you can put this no, 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 no. And, 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 and the point is that the task of the police is to ascertain that among the 91, how many policemen, how many soldiers, how many ordinary bystanders, how many antagonists, the soldiers and the armed um, black men. Okay, that's the first point. Second, everyone is being assisted by the Ministry of Justice on the legal process. We find lawyers for them. Third, the compensation for the loss of life and for the injuries were already being paid. Fourth, both Kun Suteb and Kun Apisit have been going to the court on the account of these 91 deaths, so that the truth will be told to the court and has been told to so the court. So everything court. is under the judicial process. He's not attending court. Uh, who? Suteb. No, only because of the political situation, he only asked for the postponement. He did not fly to Dubai. And we will pass it. Is there any truth? <laughs> is there any truth that foreign journalists are being bullied and intimidated at the moment? Uh, uh, Jonathan B told me that the mad German journalist by the name of Nick Nitze or something like this, a photographer, was being intimidated because 
the way he has been giving interviews to the BBC and Al Jazeera was not quite professional and objective. So that only caused anger. So there were threats, yes. But I don't think anything harm would be done to him. And so far, every foreigner in Thailand, inclusive of foreign journalists, have been heavily well treated in Thailand all the time. So only one not so stable German photographer. <laughs> I know him. I think uh, time for just one more question. Okay, I just want to add. I just want to add something. Regarding the media coverage over here, uh, I have written to quite Sorry, a bit, including the. Media All right. coverage. Okay. I will repeat the question. Okay. I was. Uh, yes, regarding the media coverage uh, over here, I have written to the BBC and including some other newspapers regarding what, what they were saying in the paper, I found that they, they reported very similar, uh, similar sentences and all of that, and uh, also bias. And only one newspaper wrote back to me saying that, sorry you did not agree with us because we have researched the, um, the news very thoroughly, and I asked, where did you get the news from? They said, from private newspaper. And everybody knows in Thailand that Thai Rat represents, uh, Thai Rat uh, works for the Thai government. So whatever they are saying here, you have to put um, into context, you have to understand where they get the news from before you um, uh, say anything. And I have been in Thailand last month, and if you do not believe about the sheet in Thailand, then please go in the street and talk to the people. I was there, I talked to the people, and I understand what they were saying and why they came out to fight. Because what, i just give you one example. One family, there were 12 of them in the family, and the whole village, the head of the village, told the people that they have to vote for Pia Thai. And those who did not vote for them would get punished. And her family, there were 12 of them, when the, when the whole family, uh, the whole village voted, there were 12 who did not vote for Pua Thai, and the whole village came hunting for them, and they could not live in that village. And I talked to them. So if you do not believe, please go to Thailand, talk to the people in the street, and that you will understand more. And do not believe the media, everything that the media say. Thank you. Thank you.
what it must be at this moment, and it is not during the period under under the the ex prime minister, Mr. Abhisit, or even during the time that Mr. Sukhev is in the cabinet. Except because I think that that is the time is the the golden opportunity and is the best time for 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 doing the the the, the reform. Because mm -hmm. so, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you you did not pay attention <laughs> when we were in the government. We commissioned Dr. Kanit Natnakorn to do the national reconciliation down south and also to do the investigation of the happenings in the year 10 and 11, that's the first part. Second, we have commissioned former Prime Minister Anand Panyarachun and through him to Dr. Pravet Vasi to come out with findings and recommendations on Thailand reform. Third, we commissioned, I think, Dr. Kanit also, to do the constitutional reform. And then they came out with six recommendations. Two were being voted in the parliament by the Per Thai and by the Democrat Party. One is on the changing of the numbers of MPs per constituent from three to one to make it more democratic. And second is to adjust the number of the party list from uh, eight per 10 regions of the country to 125 out of 500 seats in the parliament. The other four were not being agreed by the other political parties. So to say that we did not do anything about Thailand's reform would not have been true. At the same time, we also sped up the work of the legal reform of Thailand. So we have done many things, but against what background? Against the continuous red shirts, protest, threat, harassment, and burning of Bangkok, and armed black shirts shooting at people. So, and the Thailand economy was down minus seven in the year 2008, and we make it plus and plus when we left the government, plenty of money available for, for, for Yingla. We were able to hold the elections and the passing of government from Apisit to Yingla was one of the smoothest in the world. Never a word of complaint how we lost. And never up the casino politics of minimum wage of 300. We could have said 500 in order to win the bloody election. Or, you know, or to up the rice guarantee program, not at 15,000. Why not destroy Thailand, make it 20,000 baht per ton? So my, my point is that we have done a lot of work in the short that we, time that we were, and in the circumstances that we had to, to face politically. And on top of that, you have Hun Sen undermining us in collusion with Thaksin at the border and at the Prasad Pavihan. All that dirty things that friendly countries do not know with, to one another, or you don't have a Thai politician become the former Prime Minister of Thailand, become the advisors of the Prime Minister of, of Cambodia in order to undermine a legitimate government of Thailand. Don't forget history. You know how we were being treated, Chen Kap? And I just wonder, do you think that um, uh, if it seems to me that after listening to you, about some, some, uh, you have to blame about the racial protesters that makes the that makes the the, the, the reform is not successful? No, no, no. I never blame the red shirts. I am stating the fact that they burn Bangkok, and wherever I go, anywhere, 
in the provinces. They always keep on waiting for me. So that is harassment. Because the court cleared that case already. No, not yet. Everyone says about six months because all the reform elements are in Atulalongkorn, Tamasad, Nida. So many people have been doing it. So it's a question of, of compiling, and, um, summarizing, and come out with, with recommendations. If I'm not, if I remember correctly, during the I don't know. Uh, you have to. I don't remember how long. Kun, I think Kunanan took about six months. Yes, uh, six months to make a reform uh, proposed to the government. Yeah. Right? So then, what is not finished within? No, not finished because Ying Lak just ignored it. So you ask Ying Lak why didn't she continue with the reform? No, you cannot pick and choose your answer in order to pin us down. You know, you got to to try to recall and look at things in a more comprehensive manner. I think you've got to be fair to yourself also. Otherwise, I, like, I am defending the position. I am not defending a position. I am stating what actually transpired. And you make a judgment on that one. I don't think I, I said anything that is far-fetched or I took it from the air. I just recall what had happened and what is happening in Thailand for you to make a judgment. And the subject matter is political development. And my conclusion is that we have come to a point where we do not accept the money politics and representative politics anymore. And it's not a question of right and wrong. That's what the people want. And it's not the minority. I think they are reflecting the majority of the people. And then that's it. And it is for all of us to help to work together. But if we want to, to deal with one another by trying to find a scapegoat and to see where faults can be placed on certain people and so on, then you are bogged down in the dirty politics and not trying to move forward. And I said times and again here and in public and so on. Do you know that I meet Kun Pong Te so many times already and Kun Suranan at the residence of the Swiss ambassador? Trying to talk and find a common ground. I talked to one of the closest aides to Kun Thapsin. And there have been many messages from us to Kun Ying Lak and Kun Taksin all the time to find a compromise acceptable formula. But Kun Taksin would like to go on with all politics of winner take all. Winner take all. And for you to be still believe that he is a democratic man. I am so sad for you, and I am very sad for Thailand. Very quickly. Um, just want to ask your opinion on, like, what do you think will happen if um, the uh, Thai party win election after the reformation has been done by DRC, for example? Congratulations. Yeah. 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 I have no problem. Yeah. I never have any problem. Last question, sir. Oh, you decide? Oh, no, no, sorry. For me, for me. Sorry. Uh, how, do you, how, how do you think, uh, how you will deal with uh, maybe a uh, silent majority who recognize both of Clear Thai and Democrat, uh, Democrat Party uh, both like, uh, corruption, have a corruption problem? They know both of them by the vote the uh, Democrat Party also come with the Thai Kem project as well. And how do you think 
of uh, uh, how how do you think the the people can how can we trust Kusutev who spent his life 35 years in Democrat Party and be the leader now just uh, three three months how can we trust that he can act freely and do you uh, and do you believe uh, just six months, can we change Thailand to be a utopia? Thank you. <laughs> I could not get the first. I, so, Tev is the second question. The six month period is the third. What is the first one? Sorry. What is the first question? First question uh, How do you deal with the majority, a uh, silent oh, majority? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I, I don't think your notion of silent majority is long. Is any any valid anymore? Is valid anymore? Uh, and as everyone, I uh, think many of the ladies here have said that the silent majority have already come out. Do, do you think they are the one part of the 20 million votes? I, I, don't, I don't know about the votes, but I am saying that the fact that uh, on the 9th of December we have one million people coming out, and millions and millions of people watching the Blue Sky Channel, and continuous contribution by ordinary people. I think it's a reflection, in a way, of the general wish of the people to reform. And how could you have doctors and nurses and labor unions and entertainment movie stars and so on, everyone has come out onto the stage in the open, in defiance of the regime, the authority that being. And I think the, ref the appearance of these people on the stage is across, is across the board of the Thai society. So I don't think the word silent majority is any more valid. They are the not the silent, they are the vocal majority at this point in time. That's the first question. Second, I know Kun Sute for 40 years. And each one of you that sits in this room, if you were to have the chance to talk to Kun Sute personally, I think you would be charmed by him in half an hour's time. His physical appearance, he is no palam. He is not far. <laughs> but I think he is a man of his words. He a man of his words. <coughs> and whether whatever negative things you might have about him, if you are not a man of his word, he would not have been a successful politician. Second, now as a non politician leading the people's movement. He would not have been successful. And I think the point is not... Uh, I, I said many times to my European friends that uh, when they questioned me why I appeared on the yellow shirt podium, and I said, Joschka Fischer of the Green Party of Germany before he became the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Germany, he was moving machine guns on the street of Frankfurt as a revolutionary, as a political activist. So once upon a time you were a radical, but now you play by the rules of the game. Moments it was a revolutionary thing you do it. Once that is over then you get into the conventional politics. And if you don't like it, you come out again and protest. And don't have doubt about Kun Sute because he's being subjected and under scrutiny of the whole Thai people and by the international community. And the fact that he said that I have no vested interest in the future political positions of Thailand, it says something. And second, on the first day of the rally, for each state, you need half a million baht to set up the state and the electrical equipment and so on. And if you, you don't sell your shrimp farm and your land and your house in order to have the money to start first, then you could not be 
the leader because everything costs money. And you have to walk and talk. And I think Kun Suthet uh, did that. On the third point, I did not say that the reform must be completed in six months. I said the reform process to put things on paper should be completed in six months because we, have not, we are not going to start out of nothing because there have been so many studies and reports. Kun Anand, Dr. Praveet, Dr. Bawon Sak at the Thajongka Institute, Nida, Jurangkorn, Thamasat, Langsit University, everyone has, a, I think, stack of papers for proposals and so on. So it's a question of putting them in order and present it to the public for further debates and discussions and referendums. And we, have, we are very intelligent people. We can do things in a very short time. <laughs> we don't have to write a long thesis for also ask. <laughs> well, perhaps on that note, we should draw things to a close. You've spoken for well over two hours. I think we have to a lot to think about. Thank you very much.